Shabbat Shalom everyone. Shabbat Parashat Balak. Balak sends out to bring Bilam, and the idea is that Bilam will come and curse Bnei Israel. He understands that there's a lot of meaning, a lot of power for speech, for thought, for vision, for things like that. And he wants to bring Bilam to come and curse Bnei Israel, understanding that that may be a way more effective way of fighting Bnei Israel than actually going out waging war against them. Uh, but that doesn't work out. God doesn't allow Bilam to say anything that he doesn't want said. And instead of curses, we receive three brachot, three very special brachot uh, from Bilam. Uh, the third bracha that Bilam blesses Bnei Israel, he starts off with something that looks, uh, it's a pasuk, yeah, many people say it every morning when they walk to shul. Uh, it's one of the more famous psukim from Bilam's brachot, although a lot of the psukim are quite famous. And he says, Ma tovu o'alecha Yaakov mishkenotecha Israel. How good are your tents, Yaakov, the referring tribe is called in Yaakov, mishkenotecha, the place that you dwell in, uh, Israel. What is so special, what is so good about the tents, about the places where we live? Uh, Rashi, quoting Chazal, uh, says, Al shera'a pitchehem she'ena mechuvanim ze mul ze. He saw that the openings, the doors, the windows, whatever openings they have, were not directed one towards each other. Why is it important that the directions were not one opposite each other? Okay, they all, uh, okay, the different Mishnayot about it, and in this Keshchenim, and if seeing something is causing damage, isn't causing damage, but there's clearly a very, uh, uh, two other important levels to see it. One of them is uh, Tzniut. Tzniut, modesty, you don't need to look into someone else's house. You might, the things happen inside the house are meant to be, they, they uh, uh, things that are internal, they belong to the house. You might see someone in a immodest moment or something like that. Things that are okay, appropriate inside the house, inappropriate, inappropriate, outside of the house. So there's a very basic level of tzniut that we need to maintain along with other people, not, look, not walk around looking into their homes. Uh, it's uh, famous about Rav Zuckerman, Zechir Tzadik Kadosh Libracha, uh, that uh, one of his children, d- different times, I think different children, used to live in a small unit underneath their house, and the door was very, uh, doors, windows, very close to the stairs going up to the house. He said, never, never, ever did he ever look in the direction of the doors, of the windows of the house. Although it's his kids, it's his, maybe it's his grandchildren, they say his, his children, anything like that. No, never, you don't look in. Uh, so that, I'd say again, first level is basic level of modesty, but... There's another level which is, uh, I don't have to say deeper, more important, crucial to understand it. And that's uh, got to do with that, that sometimes in life, uh, we tend, human beings tend to compare different things. And uh, one of the hardest things for comparison is that we see what's happening with other couples normally, not normally, always. Every couple has amazing times and also has struggles. Uh, Normally, the... (laughs) When times are slightly difficult, there's a little bit of an uh, argument, something like that, things get uh, a little bit tense. And then, if you're also aware to what's happening in other homes, normally in the other homes, you only see the good parts of what's happening in other homes because everything's great and amazing. When you meet them, how are you? Yes, great, fine, loving, perfect. Uh, but what's happening inside, sometimes there's a lot of other things. But when we start comparing, so we normally compare things to a very imaginary world. And we see, wow, look what a present. Her husband, his wife, bought them, what a ring, what a car, everything. And especially in today's world, what if a uh, uh, husband buys his wife a car, then he also puts a writing on the, on the back window, to my wife, my wife with a lot of love, or something like that, or wraps it up and takes a picture, uploads it to whatever social media is using, and everything, and everyone sees us, and they're saying, wow, wow, look at them, wow, how much he cares for, how much uh, everything, how much he's prepared to spend. No one really knows what's happening there. Why it happened? What was the attitude when they got each other? What led to bringing that? Maybe it's all trying to overcome something. Maybe M- a million things could be. One sort of story of a, a kid, his father got, got him a car when he was 18, and he told his father, well, my whole life I've been waiting to, I knew you were going to buy me a car when I was 18. Not this car, expecting something else. Uh, okay, so you don't know what happened. You know what happened when a person got uh, received whenever you receive it, what happened, you only see the external sides of things. And then you start imagining and thinking and comparing, and it only makes your own life much, much harder. 
because why don't we have those? Why can't they go on these vacations? Why are they traveling? Why are they having those? Why are they everything looks so perfect, so organized, so whatever it is, okay, that looking into other people's homes is very problematic. Another aspect of it, that's looking into someone else's home. The other side of it is when you expose what's happening with yourself, you destroy it. Because uh, the main thing between a couple is the intimacy. The intimacy, that very pure, holy intimacy that truly is totally undependent on anything external. That's a lot, a lot of internal purity and devotion and love. And there's no way to show it. Uh, when we start trying to show it, to expose it, between a couple, there will be ways to express it. Different things, because of the connection, there will be expressions of certain things, sometimes big things, sometimes small things, sometimes often things no one else can even notice, sometimes things other people can notice, but it's very, very personal. But the minute a couple starts exposing those things, then you take it from something very intimate to something very public. The minute you turned your life into public life, there is no intimacy in public life. It's all gone, all destroyed, all ruined, nothing ru it's, it's just not there. So even sometimes people will see a couple and it looks like if they're so close and everything, they always uh, lo look like they're so, so in love and everything. You don't know what's happening. And if everyone sees that happening, there's a strong, strong chance that's not what's really happening inside there. It's just uh, sometimes plain something, but deep inside, something's totally else, like a, uh, that, that's not, don't need to bring any mashal for this one, okay? It's a, I think anyone who's experienced, anyone who's involved in a relationship can relate to this and understand it. Yet we live in a world where so much is about exposing and showing and sharing and everything, and that is the best way to destroy a relationship. That's why Bezat Hashem will follow the tents in the Midbar, Matovu o Alecha Yaakov Mishkenotecha Israel, Shelo Ayu Pitchehem Chuvanim Ze Mul Ze. That our openings we don't expose and we don't look in to see what other people are doing. Shabbat Shalom, everyone.